Madam Chair, thank you very much. Mr. Secretary, thank you um, for staying with us for so long. And I'd like to uh, thank my colleagues for asking such uh, a diverse amount of questioning. Uh, you know, we really gained a lot of insight from, from your questions. And I want to touch on two that, uh, that haven't been um, addressed today, one particularly uh, referencing my district and one uh, that uh, reflects the state as a whole. Uh, on Wednesday at about 1040 in the morning, I, I received a text message from a DSS worker at the Torrington office that uh, Commissioner Bremby had just left with the news that uh, the Torrington office was on the chopping block uh, for July 1. And I find it interesting that the, the night prior on Tuesday night, we had a human services uh, public hearing where Representative Cook was there, myself and Representative Case and Commissioner Bremby uh, had the chance to testify. And um, he didn't feel the need to pull us aside to let us know that our, our DSS office was on the chopping block. And um, just a mere hour before the governor was giving his uh, budget address that he broke the news to that office. So I, I wonder, this clearly, I, and it's under my impression that this wasn't a suggestion from the DSS commissioner or his agency as a whole. Did this decision come from the executive branch with the governor and yourself, sir? I was aware that the, the office was going to be closed. Uh, I supported that decision um, and believe that it is uh, 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 the appropriate move. Uh, we are in the process this year. It, it's, it's hard to remember when we have the, the difficult budget for next year before us, uh, but we are in the process of, of adjusting to some uh, very tight conditions in the current year. And one of the uh, activities that the, uh, that the um, uh, Department of Social Services identified was, was uh, consolidating the, the Torrington office, uh, which has an expensive lease uh, uh, and other conditions there that make it more uh, uh, costly for them to, to, to support, uh, to consolidate it with, um, uh, with the branch in, in, in Waterbury, uh, where they had additional room. The, um, this is also in line with the uh, a vast improvement of access to DSS services and uh, uh, through the internet and, and the telephone as we've rolled out a new integrated eligibility system uh, and begun to offer a much wider variety of services available. Uh, so the commissioner, um, uh, you know, I'm not going to say that I did, I did I dream it up and tell him to do that. No, uh, but we, you know, did ask the agency to develop options uh, that would allow them to operate within their budget uh, and they have we've gone back and forth with the agency to uh, identify there's some things that they wanted to do that we didn't ultimately agree with them doing and uh, some things that we encourage them to uh, move forward with including this okay uh, if you could just indulge me for a second while I um, kind of explain where I'm coming from on this the Litchfield County as a whole is about a thousand square miles which which inhabits about 200,000 residents uh, it just seems year after year, cycle after cycle, the northwest corner continues to lose out to the bigger cities. And we have a, a massive um, court, uh, court building that's about to be open uh, in Torrington. There's a lot of state property, a lot of state buildings in the general vicinity that would, I'm sure would be more than welcoming to uh, house some of these DSS officials. Uh, to ask residents of the northwest corner to now increase another hour each way to their commute to try to get to Newington or try to get to Waterbury, where public transportation is limited, if not non-existent. And this is a huge, a huge loss, or I know it's a proposal, but it, it would be a huge loss to the people of the Northwest Corner who are just simply trying to get by. And each town, each small town has a social worker and they do great things. But sometimes we need, we need an office to go into. We need officials to go sit down and speak to face to face and to close this office. I understand that there are some operational <laughs> expenses, whether it's a lease, uh, whether the facility is just too much to, to keep open, I understand that. But I would, I would urge you, sir, to hopefully consider working with DSS to find an alternative housing option for this office in Torrington so that the residents of the Northwest Corner have a, have a quick access um, to an office if they need to. And by quick, I still mean a 30-minute travel time if you're up in North Canaan or Salisbury. Um, but I, I would just urge that consideration um, in the future. Thank you. Although I would only point out that we have added bus service uh, between Torrington and Waterbury uh, in the last year. 
I, I understand that, and it's it's sometimes it's hard for us to even get to Torrington to to get on that bus. But I'll, I'll move into my that's my what, second that's question. That's DSS office was. <laughs> um, regarding the the massive increase uh, to the pistol permit renewals, hmm? uh, from seventy dollars to three hundred dollars. Um, I know Connecticut's always been good at finding the, the cash cow when they need some money. And to look at this increase, drastic increase, I was wondering how you came up with that $300 number and what the extra $25 million in revenue, uh, if this is passed, where that money would be going to? Or is it just going into the, the general budget? We estimate that the funding would uh, um, be $9 million, I believe. Nine. Yeah, it's $9 million annually uh, from the change. Um, the, uh, yes, it would go into the general fund. We believe that uh, while there was a, a, a proposal to raise pistol permit fees and use the funding to cycle back into the Department of Public Safety and Public, uh, Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection, uh, we just, we, as a, as a general concept, believe that fund revenues should go into the general fund and then they should be appropriated out for uh, whatever activities. Uh, if we set up too many separate uh, uh, funding sources for specific activities, uh, it tends to diminish transparency in our public budgets. Um, the number was developed based on a review of pistol permit fees in surrounding jurisdictions. Uh, and we saw that there is uh, the city of New York, which is one of our uh, uh, close neighbors has a pistol permit fee of I think it's three hundred fifty dollars every three years. Uh, we felt that we would remain uh, below that level uh, and could support an increase um, to this level. I appreciate that it's a strong increase, um, but uh, we thought it was uh, a, a good option in the budget. During uh, the years of, of two thousand thirteen and two thousand fourteen, two thousand thirteen in particular. Uh, Connecticut saw sweeping gun legislation yes. uh, in the uh, in the aftermath of the unfortunate events at Sandy Hook, and during that time uh, in 2013, for initial applications of pistol permits and renewals, it was just under 55,000 um, initial applications and renewals combined. In 2014, it was just over 54,000. In those two years, we saw the biggest increase of initial applications and renewals in the last 20 years, according to OLR. Is it ironic that a five-year renewal is required of these permits, and we're coming into FY18 and FY19, that's the budget we're discussing, that 100, 108,000 renewal uh, pistol permits are up for renewal in this biennium, and you're, you're about to reap the reward from that. Uh, did, did you know that ahead of time, knowing that there's going to be so many I, permits this, up this for renewal? This is the first I've heard uh, that there is an, it had never occurred to me, I didn't know that. Okay. So, so if you have 108,821 108, permits up for renewal between FY18 and 19, and suspecting that this goes through at $300, that's about $32,600,000 uh, that would be received. And also, in the Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services budget, uh, you gave the big zero to home and community-based services for mental health and addiction services, something that Public Act 13 harped on so much was to address the mental so, health crisis. So, Brian, um, I mean, Representative Olar, if we could just get to the question on just the f fiscal part, not the policy part. Sure. I do I, I don't want to go back to 2013. I voted against the legislation. I don't want to go back to it right now. It's not where we are. I want. I have at least another ten people that want two questions. So, is your question revolving around where is the extra twenty million going, or what is your question? If you wouldn't I, mind. I always uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate the clarification, and I just like to to kind of offer a solution when I see a big problem. And this is something I won't be supporting this increase to the pistol permits. But if it did, if it did pass, you have twenty four million dollars cut to the mental health services for community-based programs, and you're about to ha have an increased revenue of $25 million uh, in FY18 and 19 from these pistol permit renewals. So if that is passed, I urge that maybe these uh, mental, health, health, mental health programs be uh, fully funded once again. Thank you, Madam Chair. No further questions. Yeah.